I wanted to make this video to show how you can calibrate the stock tack. Uh, it's not a really well-known um, fact that the tachometer has adjustability in it, uh, but with the right equipment, you can tweak it slightly. And as we all know, a lot of these tacks are way off. What you need is a frequency generator. Uh, I purchased this one here off Amazon for about 15 bucks. It claims about 2% accuracy, which is not bad when you consider how far off a lot of these tacks are. Uh, this particular one was off way more than 2%, so just getting it back in range somewhat is a lot is an improvement. There are better frequency generators for maybe 30 to 50 bucks that are 1% accuracy, and then you can get quite expensive and with more accuracy. Uh, but for my needs, this little cheapo one was good enough. There is a tuning pot on the side of this tachometer. The 87 to early 89 tachometers have one tuning pot. The middle, let's say middle of 89 and up to 93 tachometers have two tuning pots. On the two tuning pot tacks, you have one, ta on one pot that's for low end adjustability and the other pot is for the high range adjustability ability. Uh, they both affect each other to a point, so it'll kind of make you go a little bit crazy where you adjust the slow end and it affects the high end and you go back and forth. You kind of have to make small adjustments on the two pot uh, units to um, really dial it in. With the single pot units, you really don't have a choice. You can either tune it for accuracy in the low end of the tack or you can tune it for accuracy in the high end of the tack. Uh, it's kind of a no-brainer which one you should go for uh, if you actually plan on using the stock tack to shift that. I realize in 2021, people are using aftermarket gauge setups, aftermarket shift lights, etc. for shifting. You don't really need a stock tack, but for a lot of people that want more of the OEM uh, feel or a cruiser, it may be worthwhile to at least check your tachometer off. Uh, I have a gauge cluster where at 5,500 RPM, the tachometer was showing 7,000, and I was able to get it down to within 200 RPM at uh, approximately 55 to 57 RPM, 100 RPM. So it was a huge improvement. I'll go over how this um, is, I'll go over how this is wired at the end, but I have this one already set up. Um, so there's a known table, allow me to zoom in. I will post a link to this. But as you can see here, depending on your RPM that you want to test for, you're going to input a specific frequency. Uh, in this case, I have 333 set for a frequency, and that translates to 5,000 RPM. Now, this one's set there, but let's just say if it was off, you'd simply use a small screwdriver, and you would come into the tuning pot on the side, and you would make your adjustments. Now, as you can see, you can adjust where this is set. So we're gonna set it to 5,000. Now, for demonstration, we're going to go to 6,500 RPM, which translates to 433 on the frequency generator. So we'll simply set this, pretty easy. Just scroll up to 433. And the tack will move as you pause. So as you make big leaps, it'll pause, but once you release and it sets, it, it'll jump to that. So we're going to 433, almost there. Now this is where it'll make you pull your head out because it was on at 5,000, but as you can see, at 433, we're at nearly 7,000 RPM when we should be at 65. So this is where you kind of need to make your decisions as to where you want it to be the most accurate. Um, I actually did a plot in Excel where I would do every point in 500 RPM increments, um, plot my desired RPM versus my actual, and made adjustments along the way until I got that line as close to the center as I could. It took a while. Um, plan to set something up like this and have a nice drink or a, a snack because you're going to go back and forth quite a bit. Uh, but in this case, we're at 7. We want to be at 6,500. So we will make the adjustment down to about 6,500 RPM. And just to see, we're going to go back to 333. See if I can get there a little bit quicker than what I did going up. So we're at 340, 338, and 333. 
Now you can see we're, we're at approximately 40, let's call that 47.50 right there. Uh, so you're never gonna get it perfect. It's gonna drive you crazy. So what you need to do is make compromises. So in this case, rather than going to 5,000, I'd probably adjust it to something like 48 to 4,900. Uh, unless you really plan on shifting at five, but in this case, if you're trying to get something closer to six, you're going to want to adjust maybe a thousand RPM above and below it to really get uh, a, get it close enough, but never perfect. Um, this translates to a little bit of being off at low RPM. So let's set um, let me set it up for 1500, which is 100 on the frequency generator. So we'll scroll down to 100. And it's actually not that bad. It's probably around, let's call that 1600 RPM. So I'd probably let that go. Um, you'll want to go up and down throughout the RPM range uh, and definitely focus on you know, where you plan on shifting. If you're shifting at 5500, you'll probably want that to be the most accurate. Now, as to how this is wired, it's pretty easy. Let me unplug my power supply. So the tachometer on the reverse really only has three inputs. I'm going to pull my wires off. If you look at the back, it's labeled S, B, and G. G is ground, so that would be your black, your negative wire. B is battery, so that would be your 12-volt positive. And S is signal. This would be the output from the frequency generator here to give you a signal that'll make the tack needle drive. Your tuning pot is here. Now, like I said, the 87 to about middle 89, you have only one tuning pot. The mid 89 and up have two tuning pots. There'll be one located right here where the screwdriver is. There's nothing on this one. The one that's closest to the center is for your low range. The one that's furthest away, this one right here, would be the high range on the two pot units. So these tacks are pretty easy to remove. Uh, I'll get into that in a moment, but let me just set this aside. The frequency generator is pretty simple. I'm gonna take these wires that were powering the tack away. There's two wires on the frequency generator, a black and a negative. Uh, this should make sense. Your red is gonna be your positive. Uh, excuse me, not your black and your negative. Your red is your positive 12 volts. Your black is your negative wire. Um, those just got hooked up to plus and minus 12 volts. You also have what's labeled on the reverse as a PWM output. This is your signal wire. It's really just one wire coming off, and this hooks to your signal wire here. That's all there is really to it. Um, these tachometers, I mean, come out pretty easily. I don't know if you've ever taken one of these apart. I'm going to have to put it back together to show you. Let's try to do this one-handed. But if you've ever taken one apart, you know that you have to take the lens off. It uses a five and a half millimeter screw to take all the screws off. So you remove your screws all the way around. You remove your next cover here. Then you remove this inner trim piece here. Now, if this has never been apart, this will be a little bit sticky to get out. But what you want to do is the way that the speedometer and the tachometer and this gauge cluster are, are, are situated is that there's an edge that sits under the lip for these particular gauges here. These can actually simply press out. They're being held in by these little clips here. The voltmeter one does have screws, so you would have to remove these two ones here, little nuts that hold these on. Uh, but for the opposite side here, this simply press out. So we don't need to take this side apart. And yeah, this, this gauge cluster has been apart quite a bit. It's my experimental cluster. But you just need to get this edge lifted enough so that when you pry the tachometer out, you can pry it up and away and out from here. And that's all there is to it. He's a modular. So the tachometers, if you had a four-cylinder cluster, you could pull the 6K tack out, put the 7K tack in. Uh, you'd be stuck with the 85-mile-hour speedometer, but that is also modular. You can pull that out and put, 
you know, 140 or 160, whatever you get your hands on. Um, so once you have your tack in hand, you've got your three wires here, 12 volts, ground, signal. You've got your tuning pot, and that's how you set it up. You're never going to get it perfect, but you can somewhat work this range to be where you need it to be. And like I said, one of my tacks, the reason I, I motivated myself to figure this out, um, well, to learn it and to pull it off, because there's a lot of online sources that actually discover this, um, is because I had a tack where I'd be shifting at 55 and it was really at 7,000 RPM. So I adjusted that one. It's much, much better now. So hopefully this helps. Uh, I will post, sorry, I will post some links in the description as to where to find some information um, and hope this video helps. Thank you.